Joshua chapter 22. We're just starting this off. What happened is, as we're going to find out very quickly, that the war has ended. People are uh, returning to their homes. And Joshua is giving the final, uh, he's telling the uh, B'nai Ruven God and Hath Travanasha, they can go home. So let's go. As, verse 1, As Yikra Yoshua, then Yoshua called the Reuveni to the Reubenites, the Gadi to the Gadites, the Chatsi Amate Menashe, and to half the tribe of Menashe, Yomar Alehem, and he said to them, Atem Shemartem Edashit Sivaj Etchem. You have guarded or kept all that you were commanded by Moshe Ebed Hashem, uh, Moses the servant of Hashem, Vatishmu. Bekoli, and you, plural, all of you, listened to my voice, the Chola Shitsiviti Etchem, to all that I commanded you. Okay, so he's starting out right away with you've heard these things. Any questions? First of all, what did, uh, what did Moshe command them to do? He says, You listened to everything that Moshe commanded. So, what did Moshe command them? Specifically, that they would go ahead of Klai Yisrael. They would. There would be the vanguard. I think they call vanguard. There would be the vanguard for Bnei Yisrael. Oh, Good. Right. Okay. Right. And then he also says, "You also did. Uh, you also listened to everything I commanded you." Great. Lo azavtem and achechem. You did not abandon your brothers, the Yamim Rabim, these many days. Again, Yamim, if it's not, it's, they did it for 14 years. So why are you calling it Yamim? So Yamim, Rashi said. Represents a big period of time. Correct. Yeah. Yamim can mean Shanim. We learned that ah, before. Ah. And Breshit. So that, that's a common ah. Yamim, Rabim, so on and so forth. Uh, they can mean the same thing. Mm. There's reasons uh, that, you, that they have. I forget. I saw this recently. That there's a distinction between Yamim and, Ra and Shanim. Uh, I can't pull it out of my mind. But there is a, the rabbis do make a distinction in how people view it. Yeah. And there's what was it like? And uh, mm. I can't remember. It was one of one of the classes that we dealt with that. If, I can't pull if it out. If somebody that. says Shanim, <coughs> um, can that li can that also figuratively mean not just a few years but a great deal of years no it can be one year it can be one year if you go to uh yeah if you go to uh um Bracious, uh to eliezer what he's talking to uh, levan levan and the mother uh, and he said after they say that uh, you can take Rivka. They take her and go. So what happens? He's about to take her and they say, you know what? Give us 10 months or Yamim. 10 months or, or days, literally. So the, it wouldn't just make sense. If you say, give me, I'll, I'll give us 10 months. If you won't give us 10 months, give us days. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. So it's give us 10 months to a year. So it can be oh. one year there. Oh. Oh, Yamim. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It goes the other way. Give us Yamim o Eser Chadashim. Give us days or 10 months. So I'm not going to give you days. I'm uh, sure I'm not going to give you 10 months. Right? Uh, That's how it went. Yamim and then 10 months. So there they learned Yamim means Shana, one year. Okay, okay. So this is my question. Was it Shanim? When they say Shanim, is that it? when we when we go to the literal word for year, and we use it in the plural. That means at least two. At least, I mean, but, but, uh, uh, is, is that taken more literally than, than the word yamim would be then in certain Oh, yeah, then you know, certainly, shanim cannot mean yamim. Years can never mean days, but days can mean years. I, no, but I mean, if you, yamim, oh, what we were saying, yamim can mean, can mean at least a year. Yes. Yeah. It can't mean that or it can mean two days. Yeah. It can't mean day, because yom yeah. would be day. But Yamim, the literal, the, the, you always go to the minimum number, so it'll be two. But in this case, in that case, I should say, it wouldn't make sense to say, give me two days or 10 months. Okay. If you won't give me two days, give me 10 months. But Shanim can be a 
big number of years old. Yeah, so, so. but it could only be two. Right. And there yes. was, uh, so, but here you would have what would kick it off is if I was going to do this, uh, just using from what the rabbis say. So you have ze yamim rabim, yamim would be shanim. So that's two. Rabim uh, would be one more. There would be three. Uh, uh, but we know that uh, it's been fourteen years. Uh, so if I really need to go for the, uh, if I, if I didn't have that, if I didn't have that knowledge, yeah. I would say we're talking three years here, just mm -hmm. simple uh, verses. You would say yamim. That's two. Rabim is three, mm -hmm. and no more because you're always going for the minimum number. But we know it's fourteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Sorry? Yeah, Yamim is plural. Oh, yeah. So it says, so you didn't abandon your brothers the, these many years. And it's also interesting. It's, it says, Ze Yamim Rabim. Not Ele Yamim Rabim. I just said these, right? So this many years. It shouldn't be, uh, it should be this, uh, the Ele Yamim Rabim. So that's also an interesting. Uh, Hmm. Tweak in the Hebrew. Ari Yom Hazeh until uh, until this day. Ushmartem et mishmeret mitzvot Hashem alakechem, and you will guard and you guarded. Excuse me, and you guarded the sir the uh, how does he translate that the the charge? Okay, the charge of the commandments of Hashem your God. Hmm. So what's going on here is according to the commentary digest. Is we're talking uh, we're talking after the fourteen years. So after the four, after this period had elapsed, the Reubenites, Gadites, and the half tribe of Nasha were free to return to their families on the eastern bank of the Jordan. Yet they did not do so. So Joshua understood this to, was due to their humility and so subordination to him. He therefore summoned them and acknowledged their admirable deeds. He then dismissed them. And he said, you kept all the commandments of, uh, that God, uh, that Moshe commanded you. Like I said, in addition to the condition you contracted to remain with your brothers until after the conquest, you kept, you kept that which Moshe commanded you to remain till the division of the land. And, okay, so that's what's going on there. The charge of the commandments or the safeguard of the commandments. Jo Joshua, Joshua uh, could not add any commandments, but could enact safeguards. So even those you kept, you to stay with us until we, uh, until we, until after the years of conquest. You refrained from battle during the conquest of Jericho, which was uh, conquered uh, miraculously, by marching around the uh, sound uh, walls and solemnly so far. You have not left your brothers. You have remained until after the division of the land, and to this day, to this day, when I have summoned you before me. I am confident that since you kept the safeguard of Moses' commands, you will always keep the safeguard of Hashem's commandments. He's giving them a nice, what we call chizuk, uh, uh, encouragement. Vieta, now Dalit. Vieta, haniach Hashem lokeichem elcheichem. And now, Hashem, your God, has let your brothers rest. Kashidi berlahem, like he said, uh, like you spoke to them, Viata, and now, Panu, turn, Ulechulachem Aleichem, go, go to, to your tents, El Erza Chuzachem, to land that you wanted of your stronghold, Ashinatan Lachem, Moshe Ever Hashem, that Moshe, the servant of Hashem, gave to you, Be'evahayardain, on the other side of the Jordan. He's given them permission. Have a good day, you've done a great job. Now it's time to go home to your family. Rock, for, uh, fifth verse. Rock only. Shimru ma'od lasod et mitzvah. Be very uh, guard yourselves uh, to do the commandments at a to uh, the commandment, but it's really commandments. Via the Torah and the Torah. Ashit tivad chem Moshe ever Hashem that Moshe, the servant of Hashem, commanded you. And what's the commandment specifically? Le'ava et Hashem, lokeichem, to love the Lord your God, v'lalechet v'chol derachav, and to go in all of his ways, v'lishmor mitzvotav, and to guard his commandments, v'ladav kabo, and to attach yourself to him, 
Ula Avdo, and to serve him, Bechol Lubavchem, with all of your, this is uh, you plural, your heart, Bechol Nafshechem, with all of your, again, it's plural, soul. So, any questions here? I had something I was thinking about the whole time. Go <laughs> it's, ahead. A little bit, it's only a little bit of relevance. Um, that when uh, there were a lot of like preparatory things that were uh, part of what Yoshua was saying, it's almost like in a legal document, uh, in a legal, in a, in a so official, in, yeah, an official government's uh, uh, the, the preamble. Thing, well, the preamble. There's like a preamble. Where is this? And where is this? And where, uh, is like the whole bunch of where is this? And then it shall be. You know, it's this. Uh, you know, there's like a there's like a, like a very flourishing language. I don't know. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, this shall be done. This shall be done. This shall be done. And there's but there is some actual law that was enacted, and that's here. But here, it's, you know, Yoshua. In, he's not saying that there's a lot that he's enacting as the official you know, official pronouncement of uh, law is enacted and that's all at the end there is go do what Moshe told you to do right so, you know he's, he's you know he's he, he's, he's, kind of, he's kind of saying this with the force of law he's the he you know he has some sort of uh, responsibility to to uh, dictate laws but he is saying not his own thing, but as a prophet, you know, he's, 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 saying, he's saying, keep what motion. Correct. Yeah. Correct. That's important for him to do right. because he's not, as you just said, he's not a prophet. He's not a prophet that can renew anything. All of our prophets know very strongly that they're not allowed to make any new commandments. So since you can't make a new commandment, all I can do is give the strength of law to say, this is what Moshe commanded how do you want to, if you want to stop anybody from doing something you just say when they say why can't they do it because the Torah says so <laughs> and that's really it that's the final authority if I say because the rabbis say so then you're going to say well what gave them the power the Torah oh, okay so it always goes back to the Torah oh. yes it's always the Torah that Moshe gave so we're always going back to that because we want to just say it's not me I'm not saying it I don't have the power to say anything but the Torah does. And since we accept the Torah, so you have to do this. And so he's telling them that you have to walk in the ways of, of, of that Hashem commanded, but you have to love Hashem, walk in His ways, guard His commandments, attach yourself to Him, and so on and so forth. So the rabbis look at this and say, uh, specifically uh, the, what they're picking on is to walk in His way. That if That is... Um, to just as God is compassionate, so you should be compassionate. Just as God is, what's the other ones normally? The uh, does act of loving kindness, merciful, and so on and so forth. The, the old uh, what the Tomer Demora is always pushing. Well, we're always pushing. Hashem, Hashem, You have to imitate God's uh, ways, and what it says to attach yourself to Him. That means by attaching yourself to the Torah scholars, because you can't attach yourself to God. That's an impossibility. So it means that we have to get close to the rabbis and to follow them and to cling to them and to their, and to their teachings. And that's what brings us close to God. And we have to do this with all of our heart and all of our soul. With all of our heart means with both the Yitzhahara and the Yitzhatov. It's easy to love God with the Yetzir Tov, but it's harder with the Yetzir So I have to use my Yetzir my evil, quote-unquote, evil inclination, that which is of physicality, and want to bring it to Torah too. However I'm going to do that, I have to utilize it. I have to be a complete unit. I can't defeat one for the other. That's not going to work. And because no matter how strong the Yetzir gets, well, I should say that way, no matter how strong the Yetzir Tov gets, the Yetzir grows... Huh. Similarly, so you're never going to get rid of Yitzhak Sahara. That's that's a promise, but you also if you let Yitzhak Sahara go, that's you just weaken down Yitzhak Tov. But they're always the same height. They're always the same strength. You can. That's the amazing thing. I mean, I want to. I say this in every class, but it's really something we always have to think about. There's nobody that can claim, quote unquote, uh, Flip Wilson line, the devil made me do it. <laughs> we always have the opportunity to do that which is right. All we have to do is do it. Uh, so we, we, we view that the, the, uh, the Yetzirah is physicality. 
I'm hungry. I'm going to gobble stuff down. Ah, oh, we I mean, eat what we need to sustain us so we can continue to study and work. Correct. That's the issue told. So there's yeah, a fight. Yeah. Right. So I, it's, I'm going to do the same action. I'm going to eat. The your heart comes out of, of physical needs. Right. Right. Like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I can take any act and make it good or bad. That's my choice. Mm. The action is the action. The action is part of, <laughs> to use such language, but the action is part of. What I do with it is something else, yeah. Something that we spent so much time with the palm tree of Deborah. Right. You know, in your first instinct, the Yitzharah is bad, and the Yitzhar Tov is good, mm. but it's not that way at all, because <laughs> the Yitzharah is that force that can lead you ah, to yeah. getting closer to God. The, the, as long as you choose properly. Like correct. the one you were saying about, it's like your coach. <laughs> right. right. It, it's, as long as you can, as long as you use it properly, the Yitzhahara is our friend. <laughs> if, we, if we use it improperly, then it becomes the enemy. Just something, you know, my main training in language was literature and just, you know, analyzing uh, literature, okay. explicatio in the text. The elegance of this, the, the 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 just the beauty of the language. And here's that word that we have in our other class, the divacus. Right. The attachment. Oh. And it's that same principle that we see in every one of these courses. Mm -hmm. With all your heart and all your Correct. soul, physically and, and spiritually, you need to make this connection to Hashem. Mm -hmm. and it's Exactly but what it is. It's pure poetry. Right. I should created it. <laughs> okay. And uh, what does he want to say? <coughs> oh, the digest brings up an interesting, um, an interesting statement. He says that what he's talking about, it, you should uh, cling to God. He says he also suggests that the scripture demands that one always remember the, uh, the Lord and his love, never taking his thoughts off of him. Even when a person is dealing with his fellow man, he must think about the Almighty. This is possible for pious people who serve as a dwelling for the divine presence, as the Kuzri explains. Thus, we explain the two verses in chapter 23 thus. You shall not think of the deities of the nations of Canaan to mention their names or worship them. You must think only of the Lord your God in all of your activities as you have done to this day. While you were in the wilderness, the divine presence was obvious through the falling of Man and from the protection of the clouds of glory. From this day on, I charge you with the same clinging, although the Man and the clouds of glory have long ceased to accompany you. So here's something else. Why do we have to keep giving this encouragement? Because God is not visible or as visible uh, in, in our daily lives. In the, in, the, in the wilderness, in the Midbar, it was quite clear that Hashem was with us. But when today, what's the clarity? That's why people say, there's no God. Or where is God? Hmm. Or whatever they want, whatever the term, terminology they want to use. Because it's not as vis visible. That's why we're learning on, uh, from David in Psalm 145, Asher mm -hmm. where, uh, where, where he says, God is not manifest, God is not, he's hidden in this world, and only through his actions do we see him, right? And this one going through all not, every, for five days already. But that's what is going on here. We don't see God as visibly as we did. So he has to say, now, on top of that, you saw these miracles that we did when we conquered the land. Again, that was part of God's uh, miracles. It was clear. Mm -hmm. But now you're going back to normal life. When you go back to normal life, you have to farm your land. You have to do all these things. And you're going to forget that there's a God that's making the grass grow. You're going to think it's natural. And he's saying, no, it's, you have to attach yourself. It's through every single thing, you have to see God. That's what they're bringing out. It's a very beautiful statement they're making. So Joshua blessed them, and he uh, sent them. 
Ve'yelchu el aleichem, and they went to their tents. Ulechatsi sheva hamanasha, and to the half tribe of Manasha. Natan Moshe b'Bashan, so Moshe gave them Bashan. Ulechetio, and to half the other half of the tribe, Natan Yoshua, imachayim Joshua gave them a portion with their brothers. Me'ever yaden yama on the side of on the west side of the Jordan. Ve'gam. And also, ki shalcham Yehoshua, shilcham Yehoshua, el aleihem ve'yevachem. And then, and also, Joshua sent them to their tents, and he blessed them. Well, that's again, he's blessing them. I mean, it's just one blessing and another blessing. What's going on there? Why is it, why is, uh, why are we talking about Chatsi Sheva and Menashe anyway? We know who, it, we already uh, knew who it was. So, the, Mitzvah David says, "This is with this is giving the reason why only half the tribe was uh, was with Bnei Gad and Bnei Ruven, because the other half God side uh, because one half was on the side with Bnei Gad and Bnei Ruven, the other one was in Eretz Israel. So, but we're identifying that he says also they sent them Gamzot Diber Lehem also this." He said to them, namely all of them, B'nai Gad, Ruvain, and Manasseh, Kashi Shalcham, when he sent them, and we're about to hear what he blessed them with. Vayomer, and he says, Vayomer Aleihem, and he says to them, Lehemor saying, B'nechasim Rabim, with much inherit, with much um, uh, wealth, Shuvu el aleichem, you are return. You you are returning. Re- you should return. This is a command. Return to your tents of mikna and to your cattle. I mean, with a you have rabo, with a lot of cattle. Because of his ahav and a chosh of barzel, with the silver, gold, brass, metals, uh, iron, uvis lamot harbe maod, and with a lot of new garments. Uh, you should split the plunder of your enemies with your brothers. Who are your brothers? Are they on the people on the side, the side of the Jordan they're about to go to? Or are we talking about your brothers, namely all of Israel? What would you say? All of Israel. All of Israel. Why all of Israel? The Israel that's on the west side of the Jordan. Why? Why not the brothers on the east side of the east side of the Jordan? Also them. Why? You mean they stayed there? Did anybody stay? That's the question. Did anybody stay on the east side of the Jordan? It says I'm going to leave your wife. You're going to leave your women and your children. It doesn't say any men. All the men were supposed to come over as chalutzim. That's the radak. The radak says it's only talking about Israel on the west side. Now it's in Israel. Those who you split up with. Going to others? No, it means even those you left, they want to argue that they did leave some people to guard the families. And so you split with them too. It's an interesting argument that they have. What There's also one other thing that's going on here. Again, it says in verse 6 he blessed him, and then in verse 7 he blessed him. So what's the blessings? What's all these blessings? And so they explain here that... There we go. Where was it? I saw all this. I thought it was very nice. Oh, when it says he sent them away. He already sent them. Now he sends them away again. So what's going on? So they explain that this is a repetition of the preceding verse. Okay. The scripture relates that when he sent them away and blessed them, he also gave them a share of the booty. The rabbis tell us that after having taken leave of Joshua, the two and a half tribes tarried several days following which they returned to Joshua takes leave a second time. So Rav Yudin explains that Reuben and God were Yehoshua's soldiers. First, he accompanied them to the Jordan, where he took his leave and received his blessing. When they were about to cross the Jordan, they noticed that their beloved leader was left almost without a, a, a cottage. Uh, thereupon they delayed their departure, escorted him, Joshua, back to his dwelling, upon which he blessed them more than he had done previously and dismissed them 
to their dwellings and families. The small, the small incident illustrates the intense love that which existed between Yehoshua uh, and the Israelites. That's number one. The second thing, well, we're, we're going to, oh, where do I see it? Let me just see where it's on this. Okay, we're coming to it. So then what happens? They, oh, I said, uh, so then it says they returned, right? So it says that was nine. Oh, we didn't get there. Okay. So now, Vayashuvu, what happened is they returned. Vayelchu b'nei Reuven b'nei Gad chachi sheva menasha. And b'nei Reuven God have to travel menasha went. Me'e b'nei Yisrael from from b'nei Yisrael mi Shilo from Shilo Ashib Eretz Canaan that was in the land of Canaan. The lechad el Eretz Hagilad to go to the land of Gilad el Eretz achuzatam to the land of their inheritance, Ashenoch Zubah, that they already took hold in, Al Pi Hashem Viad Moshe. That was done via Hashem's words. Why all those, what's what's wrong there? You have a lot of information, yeah? Um, no, I don't, I don't know. That only half the tribe of Manasseh maybe was. No, half tribe was supposed to go. That that was you had three tribes, Reuben, God, and half tribe of Manasseh were on the other side. But again, you have this whole of this information. They returned, they they uh, from Shiloh. That was in the land of Canaan to go to the land of Gilad. That was the land of their inheritance that they already took hold of, via God, via God's command. What's wrong with that? If I'm writing the book, remember, I'm not supposed to waste a word. If I'm writing a book, how would I write it? If I was writing the story? Or if you were writing the story, you don't want to waste a word. How would you say it? Say, half the tribe of Asha and the tribe of God and the tribe. The other the tribe of Asha went to the, um, the Gilad. Period. Why am I doing anything else? Why am I getting into this whole thing again? So what happened is they explain like this. The children of God, Reuven God returned. They returned from Joshua city, Timnat Sarah, where he had summoned them to appear before him. And they departed from the children of Israel out of Shiloh. Instead of heading directly eastward toward the Jordan, they first went northward to the tabernacle in Shiloh to take leave of the Almighty whose Shechina dwelt in Shiloh. And to take care, to take leave of the children of Israel assembled there. This act proved that the suspicion, which we'll, uh, I don't know if we'll get to today, can't, we won't, okay, cast upon them in the following verses was entirely unfounded. And then it says further, Accord, alternatively, the children of Ruvain, God, and half tribe of Manasseh hesitated to leave the Holy Land proper, uh, of the Holy Land proper to return to this land in Gilead on the east side of eastern side of the Jordan. Why? Now this is interesting. Once they felt the sanctity of the land, it attracted them. Thus it says, and Plank returned, returned and departed. After they started to return to their homes, they came back and departed again. For three reasons they found parting difficult. And here we go. One reason was, from it says, from the children of Israel. They hesitated to part from the vast majority of their brothers, the children of Israel. You don't want to leave. They've been with them for 14 years. So, first they feel the Kedusha of Israel, the holiness of the land of Israel, and they know their families there. Who wants to leave the family? Even though there are other... So bring my other family over, right? That would be the, the common sense. I have a, I'm living here. I realize how great the place is. So bring my family over. Why didn't they do that? Then it says, out of Shiloh. We'll come to, I'll answer that in two, uh, we'll, he'll answer it himself. Out of Shiloh. There they found it difficult to leave the sanctuary of the Lord in Shiloh. That's the other thing. If I'm going to leave the land of Israel and I'm going to leave Shiloh, so now it's a much bigger trip to come to the Shul, if you will. Why do I want to move so far away? It's a hard drive. Okay. <laughs> You don't want to go. Which was in the land of Canaan. They came back to kiss the stones of the Holy Land. It was very dear to them. And they hesitated to leave it. They fought 
all these years for it. To go to the country of Gilad. Now it has they have to go. Why? This anguish was caused by the prospect of going to another land, namely the country of Gilad. They didn't want to go anymore. They liked where they were. Right yeah? from the beginning, the, that concept of the Aliyah that you always are drawn. Correct. Correct. And it says they went to the land of Gilead, and then it says again, to the land of their possession, even though it was the land of their possession, which is always dear to a person, of which they possessed, they were forced to return to what to that land because they had taken possession of it, according to the word of uh, Hashem, especially since it had been decreed by Hashem through Moshe, they had no choice but to return. So he answers they answer their own question, right? The question really is, if I realize that Israel is a place for me, I feel a hold, I feel the holiness. I don't want to leave my brethren. I don't want to do anything. Well, if that's the case, just tell everybody, come on over. The water's warm, as it were. You can come in. And they, the answer is no, because they felt, this is all they felt, their feeling, because they felt that Hashem had awarded them the land, that that was the land that they had to possess. It was divine, uh, divine intervention as well. What they, what I, my problem with that whole response is they're the ones who asked for it. They asked special permission. So since they asked special permission, Hashem, Hashem said to them, fine, you want to be on that side of the Jordan, be on that side of the Jordan. But so they feel trapped, as it were, by that, that give in. But what would have happened? What would have happened if they would have decided you know what? We like what we see. That's the end of it. We're coming over, and that's the end of it. Would it would would it have worked out? The answer is, yeah, of course, it would have worked out. It probably would have been better for us. But as life has it, we all think that we're trapped into certain situations, and we think this is what Hashem wants, and they end up doing it, and that's what we'll have to stop. Not saying they sinned, but it, it was it was beginning of what will be the, uh, their downfall.